This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Welcome to Spain and to Barcelona. A lot of historical interest in this area. The architecture, the statues, there's some extraordinary buildings here as well. Barcelona City for now, it's vibrant, where the residents study, work and play. There's a fantastic coastline as well, and you can still find some secluded beaches away from the millions of tourists that flock to the region every year. We're just outside of Barcelona at Montmelo. This is a village that goes back to 945 and is home to round about 9,000. Although the amount of people here this weekend will be a little bit higher because the Formula One track that is close to Montmelo is hosting the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona, which has attracted teams, drivers and spectators from all over the world. Well, I think it's the historic of this track. The the the, the, or the, the circuit itself already organized it before we did, before we helped. And it's a 20th, a 20th edition this year. So it's very special, of course, because of the Formula One. Uh, they have the race of the Formula One. The teams are doing the training over here, the preparation for the new season. So it's, a, it's a, yeah, also, a, again, a legendary circuit. And everybody at this legendary track is happy to see a full and varied grid. Well, after 20 times organizing this event, uh, we are very proud to be able to, to, to run this event with Creventic. Uh, that means uh, the last eight years with Creventic. And we are very satisfied because uh, the, this year also has been a, a big success. Returning to the series, 2017 the series champions, Monlau Competition. Yeah, I'm happy. I, I love cars also, so... When I have a chance to compete with cars, I, I love it, so I'm, I'm happy. And also, it's, it's really nice to have these teammates and this, this car, so I'm, I feel really lucky to, to be here racing again. Most drivers know well in advance that they'll be competing in this Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. However, when drivers need to bow out at the last minute, that means some people get a late call. But it's sort of my job anyway, so I race every weekend in something or another. And um, for me and uh, fin Finley Hutchison, um, we sort of got the phone call to come out and have a go and, uh, and be involved, really. And any opportunity we get to come and do something like this, we're going to grab with both hands. So the guys have been fantastic. They've been really accommodating. And, uh, you know, we're just here to do a good job for them and, and keep them going around in circles and try and get a trophy at the end. A shaky and slightly scary start to the weekend for the 178 Janetta. It caught fire during a fuel stop. The guys uh, pulled the um, fuel fuel thing out and went back and looked at the pump because the pipes are too far away from the pump. You can't see how much fuel you're putting in. And uh, they wanted to put 60 litres in, so they pulled the dump can out and went and had a look. Put the dump can back in. Because of the heat, it was so hot here yesterday, it, it gassed up the tank. So when he put it, put it back in the tank, it pushed the fuel back out and down onto the brakes and it caught fire. But safety measures put in place by the series meant the fire was contained quickly and the car was even able to run in the qualifying on Friday. In the A3 class, Hoffa Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport qualified well with their 131 BMW. Well, we got pole position in A3, um, a pretty good clear lap. Already the second fly or the first flying lap was uh, good enough and uh, pretty good. And so, yeah, we are really satisfied with the result. Of course, if you have a bad qualifying session, you can put that right in the 
24 hours of racing that follows. It's a pretty long race and uh, it's always nice to have pole position in each race you drive, but uh, this time we first of all have to finish the 24 hours and then it's our goal yeah, to, finish this, uh, to finish it in the first position. In the TCR class it's an intense battle for grid position. 16 cars fighting it out and the triple eight of AC Motorsport took the class pole. We are pole position in TCR categories with uh, I think seven tenths faster than the second car so really really good. We keep pushing uh, by the end of the qualification for the TCE group uh, of car to, to try to make the pole position and we missed it by one tenth of a second so that is a little bit disappointment. SP3 class and overall pole confirmed for the number 278 with a driver who had just arrived. I've never driven this circuit before so it was sort of straight in cold. I did about three or four laps in practice and straight into qualifying. The car was really good. Um, we didn't push too hard so it probably would have a little bit more in the tank but we did what we needed to do and the main thing is we've got a good race car for the 24 hours so as long as it finishes I think we'll be somewhere near the sharp end. Hopes and expectations for the race are simple. We want to win. I think we're here to try and win, um, but to be honest, just enjoy it, have fun, and uh, try and get them a trophy, get them a good result. This is very much a team effort, so you know these guys are doing a really good job. That car has been fantastic, so yeah, really chuffed. Uh, like always in 24 hours, no mistakes, no no car trouble, and, and just keep going on the track and do lap after lap, and and we will see at the end uh, if we are on the good position. I think it will be a very exciting race. There are a lot of teams that are very tied to each other. So when they don't have bad luck uh, during the race, it will be also very tight at the end. Touring cars are integrated into a single grid with the GT competitors. Well, it was quite unclear because uh, usually we have a, uh, a first are the uh, GT cars and then the TCR cars come. But now it was one start, so it was a bit of confusion there. Yeah? The light is red, it won't be for long. 49 cars moving towards the line, ready for the start of the 20th Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. Saturday the 8th of September, 12 o'clock, moving into the afternoon as the field is unleashed. In the touring car race, the 278 CWS Ginetta is already creating a gap to the rest of their competition and by the first corner, it's already put two of the GT field behind it and is battling door-to-door -door against the 117 crossbow for the next position up the grid. Ah, uh, yeah, terrific start, terrific start. Um, and uh, we got penalised a bit because they're running a bit fast. So we're only, we're only allowed 80 litres of fuel. Um, and uh, so we can only run a uh, shorter distance of time. Balance of performance known as BOP, ensures the competition in all classes is on a level playing field. As the race develops, the faster GT cars catch up to the back of the touring car field. But the GT competitors need to be alert as the touring cars are having their own race. And it's intense. This means that the GT cars sometimes just have to wait a little before they can complete their overtake. But it doesn't always go well. When I arrive at turn 10, I let a uh, Ferrari overtake. And uh, behind the Ferrari, there was an, an Audi, just behind the Ferrari. I didn't show him, but uh, I think he, he tried to over, overtake three cars at one time. It was too much, so he hurt me in the rear, uh, the, the left front here. The, the steering wheel was, was a little bit like this, so we need to come back in the pit lane to uh, check the front. and. The team have decided the car can continue without major repairs, so the 555 is back in the race. Three Seat Leon of TTC Racing also involved in a collision. Some damaged bodywork flies off, but the car continues. I got uh, hit by a competitor. He locked his brakes and uh, drove into me, but uh, luckily also even that didn't cause any position loss and um, the car still fe felt fine and I could go on. A GT car stranded on the track, that means code 60, TTC Racing had just been assessed a penalty, so they've decided to try and use this Code 60 to their advantage, but it's worked against them. We weren't planning to refuel in the Code 60, but we thought, OK, refuel and the penalty and the Code 60 make sense, so let's do it. And the Code 60 finished exactly when we went into the pits. So we got double penalised, you know. One team that profited from the Code 60 was NKPP Racing. When it ended, 
I was on the throttle before any other guy. So I took six cars and it was a position number two behind uh, Monlau Racing. And this is their home track, so I thought well, if I can stick with Monlau, then I'll do fine. So I stuck with Monlau uh, doing uh, 201s, 201s, 201s. And then he uh, went in for the pit because it, I think he ruined his tyres and I could go on. Finley Hutchinson in the number 278 Janetta G55 is in for fuel and serves a penalty. He's getting ready for the final leg of his stint, but drama strikes as a result of that battle in the opening lap. He had a collision with um, a KTM car at the start of the race, which squashed the exhaust against the inner panel work, and then it caught fire. I think that the fire caught fire to the tyre and uh, the uh, brake line the brake line bursts and put the oil onto the tyre, which then takes uh, harder to put it out because it's behind the wheel, and so they can't get the fire which are behind the wheel to put the flames out. To the dismay of Colin, the firefighters had to pull back. It takes more than little extinguishers to put that sort of fire out, so I'm very disappointed they didn't go at the fire even more so, but they tell me it's like 300 degrees there, and they were concerned about the fuel tank exploding. So you've got to think about the safety of the marshals and everything. Even though I want to save my car, the marshals' lives and the drivers' lives are more important. The 278 isn't a full-season entry to the 24-hour series. Back in England next weekend in the Cup Series, that's my race car I normally use for that series. And uh, I brought it along this weekend so I had a few other people want to drive it. So now I've got to think about trying to convert the 178 car, as long as you don't damage that one, back for, to a race car for the series next, for next weekend. So, as the number 178 is required for genetic cup racing, should he not withdraw the car now? No, 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 we're here to go racing, and I haven't had, I haven't had my drive yet, so um, we had a terrific drive yesterday in the car, so um, we're second in class, so uh, if we can uh, win the class, we can win the series, so that's what we're after doing. As the green flags are waved again, the NKPP 175 has once again profited from the Code 60. This car caught fire right in front of me. So I said, I'm coming in because I think it will be a code 60. I go in and on the green I go in, we can uh, fill up the tank all, all the way. And whilst we're thinking it's code 60, it's a long code 60. And that's where we gained. And now we're at position number two. So far, so good. The 178 CWS Junetta needs to uphold the honor of the team. Paul May spins into the gravel, but there are many hours left to catch up the ground lost. Another team that didn't have the best start of the race, Team Hyundai Denmark. Car is handling very well, uh, but we are missing a bit of uh, top speed uh, because of the uh, BOP uh, that we are we have quite heavy. We are only we can only have 97.5 uh, effect of on the engine. Uh, are we allowed to? So so we are missing between 10 and, and uh, 15 horsepower in the car compared to our competitors. With the Code 60 out, let's have a look at the standings. Three hours in, four teams on the same lap. The number 175 NKPP Seat leads overall one pit stop against their car. The 108 Cooper and Monlau competition second. They've had two pit stops. Third, the 888 of AC Motorsport, and they've done three pit stops. The SP3 class leader Munchhoff Racing in their 259 BMW M4 is taking its pit stop right now. The 178 of CWS Engineering second and the 278 sister car still showing as third. In A3, there's a lap between the Synchro Motorsport number 76, who's leading, and the 131 Hoffer Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport in second. This is endurance. It's difficult to explain what is endurance. I think it's a really nice kind of racing because the speed is important, but also to manage everything, it's really important. The, the teamwork and also I think the atmosphere in this kind of races, it's, it's quite special and yeah, and it's like, like a family. This is the fifth round of the FIA sanctioned 24 hour touring car endurance series powered by Hankook. And we're at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. 
I think the circuit is uh, quite interesting in terms of driving because uh, there are uh, many types of corners. There are fast corners, uh, slow corners, uh, some uh, blind corners. I mean, in general, is a, is a circuit uh, very, very attractive. And the, and the drivers uh, normally are uh, very tired but satisfied after the 24 hours. Yeah, it's mega actually, it's really nice. I'm looking forward to driving it more at night. Um, but yeah, as I say, never been here. It's quite technical. Um, there's a few little bits where you, you need to keep well clear of the curbs. Some nice flowing stuff. Uh, there's a few GT3s out there that we've got to keep an eye on in our mirrors. And, uh, you know, apart from that, I think competition-wise, it'll be very strong. But the circuit's good. Uh, facilities are really good. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, of course, I know this track. Uh, my first race here was in 1993, so I know this track quite well. I did twice 24 hours uh, before here. Yeah. And so I know it's very, very good. And yeah, it's more than track, Formula One uh, uh, classification track. So it's uh, really nice, yeah. As the race here in Spain continues, it's not good news for the 155 Kawasaki Racing Cupra. A team member rushes to push the car back to the pits. I went uh, on, a, on, a, on a track. I was so, so fast uh, in my race. But the problem was the gearbox. And we have a problem now with, with the gearbox. I don't know how the team is looking now, but probably broken. He should be the end of the race for, for us. I think so, but we will see. The gearbox can be repaired, but the drivers have decided that they'll wait and try again at the next round at Spa-Francorchamps. The top four all on the same lap. When the leader, the 175 NKPP entry comes in for a pit stop, it's the AC Motorsport Audi 888 that goes to the lead, but then first position is claimed by the 107 Cupra from Monlau Competition. Leading SP3, Munkhoff Racing, Ted von Fleet is enjoying the race so far. Uh, very nice stint, very nice, out to very good. And uh, uh, it was very good, yeah, always, the car was good. And uh, the track was uh, very nice, very, very good, very good. New asphalt is okay, uh, yeah. uh, everything can happen, we don't know. In the 303 Cupra, one of the series veteran drivers. Yeah, we uh, the car uh, have a lot of wonders here. We tried to solve it, but we didn't manage. So uh, it's uh, eating up the front tires. The Red Camel Jordan NL entry slowly working itself up the standings. We are now fourth uh, in uh, class. Uh, our lineup is um, is okay, not the fastest, but we hope for the teamwork. Uh, we uh, we go for the podium. The Red Camel 303 is currently fourth in class. The overall lead is back in the hands of the NKPP number 175. Drama in the A3 class as the leader, the Synchro number 76, had a crash. Andrew Hack lost the brakes and the car is out of the race. So the number 131 BMW has taken over the lead in the A3 category. Smoke on the Catalan track. Then the 908 Ultram Peugeot emerges from the other side of the smoke cloud. Something has gone wrong with their engine. We had some parts leaving another part of the engine. So this is the turbine of the turbo. And it's just broke. So this is what we call a, a blow of turbo, our engine. So it makes fire, oil goes everywhere. And we had to change the turbo. So we lost two hours. Colin White is getting aboard the 178 CWS Ginetta. As he told us earlier, this car has to uphold the team honours here after the fire in the 278 sister car. But this 178 car also has to be kept intact for Colin to run next week's cup outing. But it's not the best start as Colin goes out. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I went out on code tyres and tried to go across the kerbs and he didn't like it. So I spun it around and flat spotted the tyres. So, yeah. But... Just a minute loss and off we went again, so it was OK. We made some places up, so we're in second in class at the moment. So we've got 16 hours ago, so it'll be a good fight, I think. Team Hyundai Denmark trailing a bit in the standings, but their aspirations have not been diminished. Yeah, I think, first of all, it is we have to stay on track for, for the next 18 hours, something like that, and then we have to see where we are. Uh, it's a long way still to go. 303 Seat comes in for a driver change and some attention from the team. This hands third position overall to the Baporo Audi number 133. Seven hours down, it's a good time to have a look at the standings.
Eight of the top nine are TCR entries, the exception being the 259 Munkoff Racing Team in sixth, leading the Touring Car Endurance Race, NKPP Racing, with their Cupra number 175. They have a lap advantage over the Cupra from Monlau competition, the 108 car. The Spanish team have nearly two minutes over their local rivals, Baporo Motorsport, with Red Camel and AC Motorsport not too far away. The A3 class is now a solo race for the 131 of Hoffa Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport. There was only one other entrant in the class this weekend, Synchro Motorsport. That team, run by Honda engineers who come racing in their spare time though, have had to bow out with their number 76 Honda. The series is put together by Kravendik and they are well known for their organisation and their helpful staff. We have the people from the office that is over here. We do all the preparations at the office, but we can't do it only with ourselves. We also have a lot of volunteers that helps us here with uh, building up everything. They're just helping us. Those wearing orange are part of the big Kreventik family and their responsibilities are varied. I'm here and where they need help. I can help them. I'm for the merchandise, I'm helping in the welcome center, I'm trying to solve all the uh, answer of questions for, for the people. Volunteering has its own rewards. You really got to love what you do. Um, it's not always easy, it's long days, it's hard work, but when you love that and you, work to, uh, you love to work with, 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 with nice people, then this really is great. What I like about it is the team spirit, that you can do such a great event with uh, a few people and um, make this happen. So that's what it brings me, to be part of this team. I like sort of work here since 2015. So, and you experience things and you learn a lot, so you can do uh, stuff more than last year and you learn more. So. For those with interest in this type of work, Kreventik offers internships. We always have people with an internship. Um, that's also good for us, it's also good for them because they have a lot of experience then. Uh, we got uh, people with more the the theory. Um, we also now have an intern that first was working with a race team, so she saw that side, but now she's one of the Kreventik family, so now she sees from our side what we are doing. And I think that's very, very nice and very interesting to see. This is my first weekend. I just started uh, the internship on Monday, so it's uh, five days ago now, and I went here on Tuesday. Yeah, my expectations are that I know how the whole organization is working, that I know how much work is behind all the events, and that I know what parts belong to organize an event. And yeah, also getting to know so many people. I already saw that I... Uh, got to know so many people for just in these three days I've been here and yeah it's really interesting I hope it will be uh, that interesting in the bureau too I'm in the bureau for three days and there I will yeah help organize uh, the events yeah like I already said doing social media and so on the Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona We've just completed seven of those 24 hours. Not all of the touring cars that started are still in the race, but those who are still have their sights set on a podium, regardless of where they are right now. A lot can still happen in the next 17 hours. Earlier on, the CWS number 178 was leading their class with a six lap advantage, but now they're trailing. It's always nice to do the fighting back and come back near the end. So we've got a lot of time to go through and uh... Hopefully it might rain a little bit to slow the cars up and you know, we can gain some time, perhaps. The track marshals are all volunteers. It's only thanks to them that we can go racing. The next competitor in need of the assistance of the dedicated Catalan marshals is the Paporo number 133. Because a, a GT car, it's put me in the gravels. I don't know why. Even with the benefit of a replay, we can't quite see why the 133 veered off the track, but the Leipert number 10 was overtaking the Paporo car at the time. As the Code 60 finishes, the number 108 of Cooper Racing Monlau competition is still leading. It's going well. Uh, we are, I think now we are leading our class, and this is the goal. We, we will try to, to keep uh, the position, and, and we will see because it's still a long time to, to go and 
and also it's important to do a good job during the night. I think it's really important and we will see. Normally the sophisticated warning systems on the dashboard will give the drivers some indication that something's going wrong, but not always. We had uh, no any any problem uh, with the engine this uh, today, only uh, also uh, oil, oil pressure was good, uh, the temperature was good, uh, everything was okay and just on one time it broke and uh, just end the story. Not the first time the team have had to address these problems. Yeah, we also had uh, another problem in, in, uh, in Imola uh, in the beginning of this year, also engine problem. And now it's the second time, so we want to, uh, to put a new en engine in, but uh, we have contact with our uh, engine builder and uh, he said you don't uh, have to do that uh, because maybe the other one is also uh, uh, going to break. Maybe no coincidence that in Imola the car suffered engine problems after eight hours of racing, which is just about the same amount of time they've been racing today. The Mark Cars team from Australia are at this race, but their Audi isn't going to see the finishing line. The, the accident was in the first hour, sorry, the first three hours, but um, what's happened since, we've managed to keep the car going, doing bits and pieces, but now it's too much damage. There's no chance of, of a result now. We just want to uh, get the car running. But the car would not be coming back to the track. Out in the darkness, the 308 Ultram Peugeot is stuck on the track, I can tell you what happened here, but only if you can keep a secret. Calculation and mistake. Uh, ran out of fuel. One liter was missing. So here one liter is half a half a lap. And we missed three corners. That's it, so we lost seven laps. In the BPM racing number 120, Ashley Woodman is really not enjoying his stint. It was difficult, just couldn't get a rhythm. Wherever I, whenever I tried to, the GCs were just flying past us. Um, it was hard. I know the other guys were dealing with it, but we had a, a bit of a twisted belt when I was getting into the car, and uh, they didn't put me in the right frame of mind. But I got into it, um, started to push, started to feel good, and the times were coming down, and then every time we had a coach 60, it's so hot in the car. Um, concentration started to go and it's like really hard to get that concentration back. The Cupra has been forced off track. Apparently the leading Seat um, took me out at turn 14. He's had to bring the car in. The steering wheel was like that in a straight line. I'm not sure. It feels maybe like the steering rack or an arm on the left. Because um, I could turn the car with the right hand wheel but it didn't, feel, didn't seem to be able to turn it with the left. The NKPP175 has been fighting for the lead for the majority of the race, but a driver error puts paid to that. We were fighting for P1, but then one of the drivers had a collision with another one with, in which we lost more than 16 laps, so we're not, uh, not actually fighting for the podium anymore. That car did return to the track, not the story for others who are ending their weekend with a little bit of a social event for the team, like Monkhoff Racing. We will be back at Spa, but uh, not with this car, yeah, separate. I'm back with my sons, and, and uh, Eric is back uh, with the BMW. It's midnight, let's have a look at the standings. Big changes at the front of the field. As the NKPP entry has fallen down to ninth, to the local teams who are leading now, the 108 of Cupra Monlau has five laps over the Paporo number 133 Audi, and the 303 of Red Camel's Jordan.NL is now in the top three. The other classes have thinned out a little, just one car running in the SP3, the 178 of CWS Engineering, First, the 278 sister car went out, and in the last hour, the Munkoff number 259 has retired too. With the 76 Synchro Motorsport Honda already out, the 131 from Hoffer Motorsport just has to finish the race to win its class. This is endurance. It's the ultimate. It's, it's the ultimate achievement. You're driving in all conditions, in all weathers, in different countries, uh, different tracks against 
people from all around the world. Where else could you do that apart from Creventi? Endurance racing, absolutely amazing. Just after midnight here in Catalonia, it's the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. Driving in the dark is a major attraction of these 24-hour endurance races. I love this, so um, I will appreciate it for sure. It's good. Yeah, you can't see that much, but uh, the grip is good. The grip is better due to more rubber in the, um, in the, in the asphalt, so it's better now. So, uh, yeah, it's very hard because it's not easy to, to see uh, the track uh, is very hard, yeah. Silverstone is difficult to, to drive at night because there's no illumination at all. But here it's a well, well illuminated track, so it's, you won't see many uh, degradation in time, in lap times. Uh, I think we'll do the similar times. What I hope is that when uh, the night comes, I hope the rain comes as well. Because then we have everything. And then it will be fun. Because then, because then the TCR cars will start joining and overlapping the GT cars because they are better in the rain. But then, then it will, might be a very nice tumble out. Then we don't know what will happen. However, no rain on the cards as yet. The 24-hour series did back to 2006. And from that first race, Red Camel has been part of the competition. Last time out in Portugal, their car caught fire. But for this race, it's rebuilt and back again. In Portimao, the, the car was on fire, but we put something uh, in the back uh, to protect, to protect the, the, the pickup, so it should not uh, be able to happen again. After the first hour, the car was eighth in class, but it's made progress as the race has continued. We went up to the third place. Um, we tried to use all the code six as we can, uh, and yeah, let's see how it goes. The TTC Racing pit crew need to have a look at their 103 Seat Leon. Yeah, we have a small crash with a car dam crossbow. And then we have a little damage on the front suspension from the car. But it's not so big deal. So we can fix it. We have can fix it. For drivers who want to race in a Hankook 24-hour event, the series website offers a service where they can match themselves with teams who have seats available. NKPP, for instance, Basically a two-man team from Holland, but for this race, they're joined by a Danish duo. We have been a sister, sister car with them for a long time, now we join. We're two Danes and two Dutch, so that's uh, quite funny. We are in the same base. Uh, unfortunately, we, we were hit, otherwise we have a good position. Jan has just finished his first stint in the night. It's OK, I started up in a hell of a traffic, so uh, it distracted me a little bit. Besides that, it was good. Problems for the number 55 Seat of ATEC Racing. I'd come through turn nine and tap the pedal to make sure I had a pedal. Um, as I got to the braking zone, flat out fifth gear, pressed it, nothing, went straight to the floor. There was one car in front of me and um, I was he, he was taking the apex and I thought I was going to just T-bone him. <clears throat> so I managed to turn left, get across his front, but we went airborne and landed and broke the radiator and then I had to throw it into a spin to stop hitting the wall but it was okay it took an hour and a half but the car did return to the track this FIA sanctioned international endurance series was created for gentlemen drivers teams are allowed to have professional and semi-pro drivers in their ranks this benefits the gentlemen drivers who can learn from their teammates and improve their racing skills one of the semi-pros is Vincent Rademacher in the triple eight Audi from AC Motorsport However, there's no way he can avoid the consequences of a loose screw, as the team manager says. Vincent Rademacher was uh, on track and uh, just we broke a, a, a screw at the rear left. Uh, and uh, the tyre goes to the body of the car and just a little uh, fire uh, arrive. And uh, that's the reason that uh, uh, we stopped because he go to, uh, to the... Um, on track on the left side, but uh, due to the smoke, he see nothing, and uh, just uh, it touch it touch the wall a little bit. Yes. Partly owing to the fact that they were in the pits earlier with other issues, the team decides to retire the car. It takes long times to repair, and we had uh, more than uh, 30, 30 laps uh, lost already. Just we 
we decide to stop uh, the, the race because uh, uh, we, it's not possible for us to win, of course. Klaus Kresnik, meanwhile, saw his team's car progressing steadily throughout the night. I could bring in my stint the car to P4, so could really not drive nice times. You know, it was cooler conditions. We have a turbocharged car, and you know, turbocharged cars love cooler temperatures, so I could uh, do really a great pace. Um, stay out of all the troubles because you know in the TCR class there were a lot of uh, fights and there's still fights ongoing. Battles on track always an attraction of this type of motorsport but one overtake had Jose Manuel Perez Eckhart on the receiving end. As a result there are parts of the Monlau competition Cupra scattered all over the track. What we noticed is that we received a contact in uh, behind the car and uh, in T9 in the fastest corner on the track and we go directly to the to the wall. So the driver is okay, the car is completely destroyed and we are looking that there's some behavior on the track that uh, I think would be better that everybody keep it calm and uh, the GT car respect the tourist car and the tourist car respect as well the pace of the GT cars but it's being difficult to run like that because a lot of accidents are taking care of now and let's see how it's working. A long code 60 is needed to recover the 107 Cupra and repair the damaged track barriers. Fortunately, at the scene of the incident, there's an alternative track configuration. The cars use that, and that allows an even safer working environment for the marshals. Six o'clock in the morning now. Let's have a look at the standings after 18 hours. Leading the number 108 Cupra Monlau, six laps the advantage over second in class, ten laps over the third position car. Well, as we've seen, a lot can and possibly will happen in this endurance race. But for now, it is that 108 leading. The Bapora 133 runs second, Red Camel 303 in third. The combined standings of SP3 and A3 show the 178 CWS Engineering Janetta in the lead of the SP3 class. They've done 448 laps. In A3, the Hoffer BMW number 131, 287 laps completed. And they're in the pits at the moment. Everyone else in those classes, I'm afraid, have retired. Series sponsor Hankook bring a lot of new tyres to the track and they get a lot of used tyres in return. These tyres are analysed by Hankook tyre specialists. After the life cycle of the tyre, that means when the stint is gone, the tyre come back to us, we demount the tyre, then you sort the tyres over there, how many of them they are already waiting, and then we select some of them for a so-called internal check. What we are doing there is we're checking the tyre wear, which is very, very important, not only for us, especially for the teams, because then we can tell them, okay, your car setup is good, your car setup can be approved in some uh, directions, however. And we also select data about, for us, which are for us internally very important, about life cycle, mileage, and especially camber angles and so on. Look, here, for example, what we're doing here is, you see this is the tire after using. This is the normal surface of the tire. After cleaning, the tire look like that. So that means we put all the pickup tire away to see the clear picture of the tire. From this side, this was the outside view, this was the inside, you can see a big difference. Here you can see the tire wear, where you have the so-called indicators. Outside it looks really good, but here inside the tire, you see it's nothing there, it's gone. And you see also the different shape. Here especially, it really looks very good. Here the problem already starts and this is already a zone inside the tire, where the tire was used almost too long. Still the tire was in a good condition, but maybe another five laps and problem starts. That's the reason why we check this. All that information is used by the teams to make better setups for their car and improve their times and maybe their championship chances. With the green flags out, the cars get back up to speed and the Hankook tires are pushed to the max. Meanwhile, the Monlau engineers are evaluating the damage to the 107 Cupra. Repairing it at the track is not going to be an option. Not their first incident this weekend either. At the beginning of the race, we have an accident as well in uh, around hour six or something like that when we were leading the, the class. And uh, now we were uh, taking positions. We were in P4 and we have the second and definitely accident and we must stop the race. Good news, all the safety measures built into the car and at the track work perfectly. The driver is okay, he feels uh, really be a, a little bit uh, bad because of the contact and due to the, the accident, but everything is okay and uh, the most important thing is that the driver is okay.
The team still had their other iron in the fire, though. The 108 car is the overall leader, and they still rightfully have high hopes for the race. Long code 60, not always easy for the drivers. You have one hour code 60, so you feel really the pain in every part of your body. And picking up the pace is uh, very difficult. Uh, a couple of minutes ago when the race was restarted, there well, was a pulk of GT3s in front of me. They all clocked 2 minutes 15, so nobody can't get again in the rhythm. Code 60 race, code 60 race, so it was a bit strange. But we destroyed anything, so I think that's the most important thing for that stint. The green flag didn't stay out for a very long time. Paul May in the 178 Ginetta at the side of the track. It was running really sweet, at the top corner, turn right, and the next minute the wheel came off. No indication of anything before, so uh, no idea. It's not been a lucky weekend for the team. We were fighting back. We, we, we had a problem in the early stage, and we were 19th, and we were up to third, so we were, uh, we were optimistic to get right up there, so really disappointed. So it's a mechanical failure, but uh, don't know what yet. We're not going to give up, put it that way. So, uh, you know, we'd like to be in the top three. So we are fighting for the championship and, and we're not going to give up. We're going to keep going. More activity in the pit lane. The Swiss TTC racing team are working on their car and right alongside the mechanics, the driver working on the car too. Uh, the driver is Daniel Schillinger. Uh, he's also the owner of the team. He's a mechanic, you know, he's very passionate, so... He tries to fix his baby himself also and assist because he has really a deep knowledge also of the car and that's why he is heavily involved in any repair. Have a close look at these pictures. This is the NKPP number 175. Keep looking. Now it's the 155. How did Baz Coton Racing pull off that magic trick? There was a warning on the screen that we had to replace our rear window. As the rear window was broken somewhere in the night, I think two hours ago, we took the rear, uh, the hood from this car and we put it on the other car. That was the quickest one. But the colours don't match. No, but the colour doesn't interest us at the moment. Um, the solution, that's it. And there's a rear window in the car now, so uh, it can go on for the rest of the race. However, the team would endure other problems. The 108 now has what looks to be a comfortable lead, but that doesn't mean they have to stop fighting. Very competitive teams. They are very fast. Um, so it has been very hard to be there. Many GTs, so the night has been very, very hard to, to do. Because the lights, they, they are bad for the eyes. We could have a lot of vision. So... Yeah, it has been a really hard race, but now we are first, and we hope to finish like this. The 108 is leading the race, three hours to go to confirm the victory. Let's take a look at the other cars in the standings. No change in the top three. It's the Cooper Racing Monlau Competition number 108 who leads. The 4 Motorsport and their 133 is second, and the 303 Red Camel Jordan.nl is in third. There's quite a battle for fourth and fifth. They're just 24 seconds apart. The Bok Motorsport 115 and Team Ultran Persia number 308, although they are seven laps away from a podium spot. Other than the TCR cars, it's only the CWS Engineering 178 still running. They're sixth overall and leading the SP3 class. That's even better than they did here last year. They finished 12th overall, but they had to give the class lead up to NM Racing. Now, everyone else, I'm afraid, are out of the race. This is endurance. It's um, being able to keep going for 24 hours and whatever gets in your way, repair it and keep going and make sure that everybody's fit enough to be able to do and share the driving times. Try to do it a few times and we'll get the hang of it. The Creventic organised endurance series continued to develop, racing with prototypes, GT cars and touring cars in the European Championship, of which this Barcelona race is one, and the Championship of the Continents, with Asian, European and American races. And, from next year, a brand new series in the Middle East. We have a new uh, championship, uh, a short championship in the Middle East for uh, GT cars and uh, prototype cars. 
uh, sweet weekends after each other, Dubai Autodome, Yas Marina and Dubai Autodome. It's end of uh, January and the beginning of February. And uh, we have, and it's maybe more easy to uh, explain, TCR International uh, Series. Uh, also three weekends of uh, sprint racing with uh, TCR cars in the Middle East. The events will follow shortly after the 24 hours of Dubai. That allows European teams who want to run these new series to stay out and have a go. We're going to have two more competitions in the Middle East, so we really want to try to support the Middle East region and encourage European uh, companies to uh, leave the cars in, in the Middle East to participate there in, in more events. It's a perfect pre-European season championship. Uh, there will be two races in uh, Dubai, one six-hour one and one ten-hour one, and there will be one four-hour race in Yas Marina, Abu Dhabi. It's a nice competition, uh, a lot of track time, which is interesting for cars and teams, and uh, you can register on our website, and otherwise you can always contact us. The organisation has great faith in these two new series, and the name of the series sponsor is already known. Well known. Yes, we will do that with uh, with Hankook, of uh, of course. Uh, we will also do a lot of local. We expect uh, local teams and as well uh, teams from uh, from Europe. And we already do the shipment uh, uh, for. So it's a new challenge, and uh, we try to to get that started. Yeah. So we have uh, we will we uh, trust in it, and it will uh, work because it's a unique opportunity for the teams to do a lot of testing in the winter time. Races are run on three different continents in the 24-hour series powered by Hankook and yet teams still find it really worthwhile despite the distance of travel involved. That's especially true for those for whom this event is a bit of a friend's outing. We all do everything together to be fair. It's a lot of friends and colleagues and work people and we, we just all do it for fun, you know. We come here away for a week away from home and the idea is to have fun, you know. Be serious but fun. The team did have more than their fair share of issues. In qualifying we had turbo issues, which we managed to cure overnight ready for the race. We didn't know whether it worked until we got into the race. We then had low fuel pressure issues in the race with a, a pump failing, so we had to run full tank all the time, so pitting more often. Then in the middle of the race we had a caliper fail and I had brake failure at the end of the straight. We managed not, managed not to hit anything, uh, went across the track, sideways, span it, and then crawled back to the pits, mended that. We had a hole in the radiator because of that, and we've mended that, um, and now we're still going, and we've just lost third gear. The race will end at midday, so the team managers are keeping a close eye on everything that's happening on the track. We are fighting for the podium, but uh, win the race, looks look like impossible if the first car don't have any problems. We are trying to keep the second one, and it's all for us. And we are trying to adjust our strategy to the end of the race. The number 178 Janetta is once again on the wrong side of track limits. Just broken oil pump belt, so it uh, cut the engine out, so we got it recovered, put a new oil pump belt on it and sent it on its way again. I think it's all the rubber pickup has got into the engine bay, just thrown the belt. We'll get a finish, that's all we're after now. Even at this stage, no position is safe. You never know when things will go wrong, either with your team or with one of your competitors. Not even the overall leaders dare think about their victory. But it's a Spanish team with Spanish drivers in a Spanish car on a Spanish track. Surely they have the best chance to keep the trophies in the local area. We lost 24 hours. This, this season we couldn't do the, the whole championship, but at, uh, at this track is our home. The team from Barcelona, so we we wanted to do this race. Um, Cooper called me, I'm allowed, called me to give me the opportunity to go with them. So it has been amazing, amazing team, amazing drivers. So we couldn't, say, I couldn't say no. Alba knew she'd be joining the amazing team of drivers Lea Sanz, Frances Gutierrez Agui, and Jordi Janet. But some teams had more drivers on board than they anticipated. We thought we had uh, four pilots, but we had the fifth pilot as well sitting on the uh, in the back row, Mr. Murphy, because it turned out that Murphy's Law was driving with, with us, and uh, our Danish colleague uh, had a little accident uh, in the chicane uh, going up to the straight. He was hit, and then uh, all things fell apart, and we ended up uh, changing the uh, uh, drive shafts. We ended up uh, with a windscreen in, in the rear missing, 
We ended up with uh, brake fluid looking, so we end up sixth. Shame. As we get close to the chequered flag, Colin White is taking the opportunity to bring the 178 CWS Ginetta out for the final laps. Still with a five lap advantage, the 108 Cooper Racing Monlau competition team is sure now to take the win in the TCR class as well as the overall victory. We knew the race was going to be long. We knew our strength was the team. We have a very powerful car, a car that is quick. Maybe there are cars that are as quick as our car, but uh, our team did a very good job. And the three and the four drivers that, that were jumping on the car, we, we, we also worked really hard to, to do a very quick driver change, to have a, a setup that worked for all of us. And I think that's been the key to be able to be in the front. Confirmation then, after 24 hours, Francesco Gutierrez Agui in the 108 Cooper TCR DSG, who will win the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona for his team. The 108 Cupra entry is a combination of the Cupra Racing Factory Team and Barcelona-based Monlau competition. In 2017, Monlau were the overall champions in the Touring Car Endurance Series powered by Hankook, and they've improved on last year's outing here at the Circuit to Barcelona Catalunya. In 2017, the Monlau car finished third overall, second in class. This year, outright winners of the race. Out of the car, Francesco Gutierrez Agui is sharing his absolute enjoyment with the team. Yeah, very, very happy. It was a very hard day, it was a very hard race, and well, well, everybody, everybody was, was successful, was, was okay, and I'm very happy for the team, for Cupra Racing, for Monlau, for all the top sponsors and all the people who helped to be here now. When you are given the last stint of driving, you're the one that carries the flag for your team honours. And even when you've got five laps in hand, getting to that finish flag isn't a breeze. The thing most difficult with more responsibility is this last one. Every noise that you feel, there are maybe the car is not good, etc. etc. But finally I'm here, we won. So incredible. Winners Monlau are based in Barcelona, south of the circuit. In second place, Paporo Motorsport, they're based north of the circuit in Bic. So for us, it's like a, the second time that we race this one. We really like it. We normally race Creventic a lot. Uh, we've done already podium, so we like the formula. It's good. Red Camel didn't qualify as they had expected, and they lost more places in the first few hours of the race. But they kept at it, and after 12 hours, they were in the top three, and they held that position throughout the remaining 12 hours. Yeah, I think we have very bits to, good bits of strategy. We make use of the code 60. We were inside quite a lot, so uh, I did everything I could. Uh, we had to spare the car, there was some small problems with the car, the setup, and uh, but uh, we did it. And I'm very proud of the team. Uh, they did a wonderful job, the drivers and the team, and uh, yeah, they were really great. And uh, this one is for uh, Gerd Jan. I think it was a fantastic race. It was very exhausting. We had a lot of action. I think we have great, great, great winner uh, in our home country in Spain. So I think it really was a fantastic race. Yes, it was very interesting. The result was very interesting. Big fights and, and two teams of, of Barcelona won some categories. That Everything for me was fantastic. The number 108 Cooper Racing Monlau competition team takes the top step of the podium ahead of their regional competitors, Vaporo Motorsport. Their 133 Audi was five laps behind the winners, but six laps ahead of third place 303 Seat of Red Camel Jordan.nl. Now, all of these are TCR cars, so the standing at the end of the TCR race is identical 108 from 133 and 303. The CWS Engineering number 178 takes the SP3 class. The car endured a lot of problems in the race, but Colin White's team kept the car going and take home the trophy. The other entries didn't make the finish. Coming to the end of the race, none of the A3 cars were circulating. And after nearly 12 hours in the garage, the Hoffer Racing BMW number 131 did come out, did the final laps and took the finishing flag. The other competitor didn't complete enough laps to collect any championship points. No season championship winners decided here at the 24 Horas de Barcelona Trofeo Femen Velez. So now we set our sights on the season finale at the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa-Francorchamps. 
All the championships will be decided and celebrated there. Be there as a spectator, or better still, as a competitor. All the info you need is on www.24htcesiries.com.